we have our first funded trader here and we are super excited um, to get this interview going. I believe you started last week trading and uh, you're actually the second funded trader that we have on here. Fortunately, we were not able to get the other trader on, but we are working with him to get him interviewed um, as well. So let's just start uh, with what is your name? And that's Matej Mack. Um, yep. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, where do you call home? Where, where are you located? Uh, Dubai. I'm based in Dubai from London. I've uh, been in Dubai for four years. Nice. How did you, uh, you know, how did you get started with Forex trading, you know, and how old were you and everything? And we'll go from there. Um, well, actually, um, that's how my career started um, in financial markets. I started in about 10 years ago, whatever it was, out of university. Um, I started trading, I got a job as an intern in a, actually a US stock brokerage, uh, but in London. So that's my first introduction into trading, basically. Uh, back then it was mainly US equity, then I got another job, UK equity, and then it was Forex and CFDs and all the rest of it. And uh, then I started doing it myself uh, as, opposed to client, as opposed to for clients. Yep. At what point did you, uh, you know, venture on your own and start doing it yourself? Um, I think after a couple of years into the if, into the into my career, because uh, just had a feeling I was literally coming in at zero, like no no knowledge, nothing. Build a bit of experience and understand how the game actually works, and mm -hmm. learn from other people's mistakes, and then you make your own mistakes. So yeah, it was a I've been doing it for quite a few years now, mm -hmm. some to some level. Uh, would you say that you you know manage your own funds or you manage investor funds right now? No, the I don't manage any investor investor funds at the moment. Um, that was in the past. Um, so I went to wealth management for a while, so that wasn't really trading. Um, so I kind of stopped uh, stopped doing it for clients for a while ago. Mm -hmm. so yeah, still, you know, there's certain challenges involved with managing yeah. your fund, your own funds, clients' funds, and then obviously prop funds as well. Exactly. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much because the hassle of managing a client's funds, uh, it's not worth it, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Really worth it. Yeah, yep. too much. I mean, what is, uh, you know, your favorite, I guess, part about being a trader? You know, obviously you um, mentioned managing clients' funds is challenging, but, you know, you obviously seem to have some, like, it, it dependency or independence with it. So, like, what's, what's kind of your favorite part? Yeah, I mean... In terms of the actual job or however you want to put a career, just having that flexibility. Like I can literally just, I can be out and about, I can be on the beach with my phone and, you know, put on a trade, check my trades, whatever it might be. Um, it's that flexibility, which is good. And also it's kind of like you're, you're in control, right? Of your own destiny to a certain extent. If, as long as you know what you're doing and you've got a good plan and all that kind of stuff, you're not dependent on a boss to hand you check you know mm -hmm. once a month and be grateful for it thank you very much for my you know 10 hours a day nonsense um so you know yeah, i mean i'm sure you know obviously from the perspective that i have i know there's a lot of hard work that goes involved with even getting yourself to the position that you're in a lot exactly, of sacrifice yeah. of course you have to you can't do it from day one if you can you're very lucky i don't know anyone who can it takes a long yeah. like i said i started this journey 10 years ago or something Mm -hmm. um, but I knew sort of my mindset is such that um, I knew at some stage I had to venture off on myself. Obviously, back then, I didn't know how it would look. Um, but yeah, I knew I had to do my own thing and I enjoy what I do. Um, and now I think I'm in a good space sort of rhythm wise. I know my plan and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think I could go back to a nine to five anytime soon unless I'm, you know, desperate, basically. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Let's go on. So how did you find uh, the funded trader? Um, I actually followed your, you guys at Forex League for a while uh, okay. on Instagram. Um, and then I came across prop firms in general um, a couple of years ago, whatever it was. And then, um, yeah, I think, yeah, just through you guys, through your Instagram. And then you set up a, through your Telegram group as well. And then just from there, really. Yeah, no, that's obviously, you know, amazing. We've got the Forest League community, which has a ton of traders, you know, coming from and working with not only the funded trader, but other prop firms as well. And then obviously Blake's as well. So that's 
the coolest part for me is just kind of, you know, meeting all these different traders, all these different people. I see a lot of them are pretty silent, you know, when it comes to the chats and everything with for with Forex League. But then when it comes to the prop firms, all of a sudden we're like seeing all these, you know, people that are pretty accomplished that know what they're doing. They're coming out and they're taking advantage of the opportunity. So from my perspective, that's pretty cool. And that's, you know, why I got into this was in the beginning as a trader, I wanted to just meet other traders, you know, and that's kind of why we're starting to do this interview series as well. So people can kind of just put a face to the name of these people in these discord groups and, and realize, you know, these are real people making these moves out here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As soon as you start putting money in front of people, right. then they're going to be a bit more chatty. <laughs> you put in the, these discord groups and stuff. Now they've got a bit more of incentive. Like, okay, I can make some money here. Oh yeah. I can do something, you know, oh, yeah. Changes yeah. everyone's mindset. Hopefully so I remember the, yeah, yeah, I first, when I first learned about FTMO, to me, it was like a mind bending, you know, yeah. I was like, whoa, like this is, this changes the game. Because before that, yeah. you're like, all right, how am I going to save up my first hundred thousand? Yeah. How am I going to, you know, exactly. trade this thousand dollars and scale it up? How am I going to potentially, you know, get an investor, which to, at that point was far, far reaching. So yeah. this is a whole entire different game now. Yeah, I had the exact same experience. You think you sit there thinking, okay. I know what to do. I just don't have the means to do it, right? And realistically, you're not going to trade a thousand dollar account or hundred thousand dollars that easily, that quickly, or ever no. really. It's, it's yeah. virtually impossible. I don't care what anyone says. Um, yeah. If you do it, it's I'm on the same. Very good for you. Yeah, I'm on the, with with you know when it comes to acting as a professional, all the material that I've read, all the you know colleagues that I've discussed this with, it's when it comes to trading professionally. People are risking 0.5%, 1%, you know, very low percentages. Yeah. And yeah. ultimately over time, you know, they're having an edge and they're making their gains on larger accounts. It's not, yeah. you're, not exactly. seeing, you're not seeing these, you know, any of these people in market wizards or any people interviewed on, you know, from any of these firms flipping $1,000 to $100,000. Yeah. Like, it's, it's you're not going to do what? 10% a month, 5% a month. Yeah. On a hundred grand account, that's good money. On a thousand dollar account, what are you going to do with that? You know, it's yeah. just unrealistic. It's yeah, the whole flipping thing is just a you know an Instagram phenomenon. Yeah, exactly. A exactly. YouTube, a YouTube grab. So I definitely believe yeah. in that. All right. So no, what know. what motivates you to become a funded trader with all these prop firms? Um, I guess it's just um, it's just a good opportunity. It's, it's in a sense, it's like you kind of said, it's a this almost came out of nowhere and now you can kind of actually make a living out of it without mm -hmm. having to raise funds and you know and be responsible and trade investing. responsibly Pardon? and trade responsibly yeah exactly without having to take a silly risk on a small amount on a smaller account and essentially what you're doing is for example you've got a thousand dollars you get one of these accounts and you're leveraging that thousand dollars right in a sense and if you're if you know what you're doing you know, there's no reason why you can't be successful, to be honest. Yep. Have you traded with any other of the prop firms? I tried out FTMO. Um, I didn't really like a couple of their rules. Um, I never really went much further with them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So when I started with you guys, I was looking quite actively around. So the timing actually worked out pretty well. Right. Yeah, there's quite a few rules, you know, not only with them. Every prop firm has obviously very different you know rules that they're they're going after which is completely fine and you know it's up to the trader you know to decide which one that they'd like to work with so you know obviously i'm happy that you found you know a place where you're comfortable i know the weekend yeah. rule even though yeah the weekend rule is good. yeah even though they did remove it i know the weekend rule for you was a big a big uh you know point yeah, i mean look, especially with the way i trade forex is that i i swing trade Forex, mm -hmm. FX. So I like to hold it sometimes over the weekend. And it just seems like an arbitrary thing not to allow you to hold a trade over the weekend, I think. Um, but like yeah. I said, everyone has their rules for whatever reason. It works for some, it works, but it doesn't work for others. Um, yeah. Yep. So let's go on to the next question. Have you ever managed accounts for other people? I know we covered it briefly, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I managed quite a few different various CFD accounts. Mainly those, those were mainly uh, uh, in the stock market as opposed to the foreign exchange market. Mm -hmm. um, managed cash equity accounts, so not leveraged. 
and I was a wealth manager in the UK uh, for the largest UK, largest wealth management company in the UK. So I managed a whole range of products for them. Uh, then I stepped away from all that and just do it myself, to be honest. It's, you do it yourself, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, you know, ultimately the goal for, for all this is freedom okay. at yep. the end of the day. And you said, what, you're originally from London, but you're in Dubai now? Yep, I'm uh, born and raised in the UK. Um, moved to Dubai four years ago, pretty much, yeah, exactly four years ago uh, with my wife. And um, yeah, loved it here. We're loving it here. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You, do you have a trading community? Or, or anything? Um, well, I kind of tried to start one up randomly a couple of years ago. I haven't really sort of done much with it at all. Um, I got like 300 followers on there or something. So maybe this video will boost that up a little bit. I don't know. But I'm not, I haven't really tried to do too much with it, to be fair. Right. Yeah, we just, you know, tag, we'll tag you below this video with, we'll link your Instagram and whatnot, any other ways that people could get in touch with you yeah, yeah. and whatnot. So if anyone does have any questions for you about your journey, yeah. I know from like a, you know, some people are looking at this extremely motivational you know, at the end of the day. So if you guys wanted to reach out to him, I will link um, below a way that you can, uh, that you can reach him, you know, ask some questions. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me up. No problem. So how many, how many times have you blown an account? <laughs> um, <laughs> quite a few times, I think over the years. Most of them are small accounts, to be fair. Right. But it still hurts, right? Um, I couldn't give you a number, but it's not its not one or two, but it's not like 10 or anything. I probably have three, four, five, something like that. But most of them are small accounts. Yep. Um, yeah, I would say once that, you know, three to four or whatever, once that happens, you kind of, you got to you gotta learn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just learn from your mistakes, right? And after a while, it's just like anything, right? Just like anything, you learn from your mistakes, whatever career industry you're in. The difference is when you learn from your mistakes in our game, like you lose money. You, right? you lose money. Like, it's just different. So, but yeah, um, yeah, probably a few which, times. Which is the draw? Which is the draw to all of this? Is you know, there's money to be made if you're successful, and there's money to be lost on the flip side of it. I mean, I, I've lost money for myself. I haven't lost. I haven't blown any accounts for any clients in the past because mm -hmm. that is a different kettle of fish. That's a different yeah. level. But yeah, it happens. I, I don't know. I've never met a trader for former colleagues or friends who hasn't burnt an account. Yep. I, I think anyone that's trying, you know, to, to get into trading is ultimately going to run into that risk of ruin situation. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it is what it is. I mean, we, had, we always advise at Forex League, we're, we try to tell people, open your first live account with a minimal amount of money, you know, don't put yourself at risk with, you know, thousands of dollars because yeah. ultimately it's not you know, per se your skill level. It's, it's just the, the psychology, the psychology, the, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's the mentality behind, you know, yeah. you get into a few losing trades, all of a sudden, you know, they compound and you just make that decision to yourself that you're willing yeah. to lose the rest of that money and make <laughs> yeah. that the other amount of money. And it's just not the right you know, decision to be making. Yeah. You take a small loss and you're like, no, nah, I can't take the loss. I'm going to try and recover it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go two, three times in and then the loss gets compounded and you're just like, what have I done? Yeah. That's why, you know, it's important to develop that internal dialogue. I mean, we've even seen, um, you know, with the performance on your account, I mean, the other day you went down a little bit, and it was like, okay, I'm gonna take a step back. And then you came roaring back, right? Yeah, that, I mean, that was, again, a little bit of my mistake, just exactly what I sort of explained. As in like, I took a smallish loss, a loss that, I, you know, less than 1%, which is, I risk 1% on average. Mm -hmm. I think I took a 0.8% loss and I just, well, no, I can recover this. And then when I try to recover it, I didn't. So I thought, okay, I'm not gonna, so I took a bit of a hit, granted, but I thought okay, I didn't hit the, the maximum allowed to lose in that day. I went, mm -hmm. I made sure that didn't get breached. And I thought, okay, tomorrow's a new day. And um, my plan was literally, okay, I've got three weeks until the, the end of the month. So I just broke it down. Okay, I need to recover this loss realistically in those 15 days, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So I worked out, okay, if I do this, 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 I can do it. And then the next day, the market, because I was trading... US 30, and I just thought, well, I, just, I don't know if you saw it yesterday, it just 
went completely down in the London session. So I traded my way and recovered the loss. So sometimes the days, you know, sometimes those days occur where they work in your favor. And look, you've got to have the courage, right? Sometimes just to kind of make the make these moves. But oh yeah. It's not yeah. Really like, from what I can see, those you were trading what Ger German 30 and U US 30? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I prefer the indices to be honest more than anything because they move and um that leads me into my next question i was going to say um, what are your favorite pairs to trade yeah those two at the moment are definitely my 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 preferred ones um a little bit of gold and then just the major fx pairs um i don't have a preference on fx to be honest um but yeah german market u.s market that's my forte i'd say Nice. Um, so let's go into the next question here. When you take a few losses, what helps you come back strong? This is obviously relevant for this situation. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to psychology and mentality, right? As in, everyone's going to, first of all, you've got to treat a loss. It's like it's part of the, it's just part and parcel of the game. It's part of your business plan. However you want to phrase it, it's just, mm -hmm. there's not a trader on planet Earth you would not make a lot. You always will make a loss, like once a week, once a month, whatever it is, probably more times than that, to be honest. So you have to accept that and understand that that's part of the business. Um, take a step back, to be honest. I mean, the worst thing you can do is take the loss and then try to reverse the trade or revenge trade or do something stupid and then compound the mistake. So I would just take a step back, even take a day off, to be honest, and just come back to it a few hours later or 24 hours later with fresh eyes. And um, if you have a good plan, if you know what you're doing, you've got a good strategy and you obviously believe in that strategy, otherwise you wouldn't be implementing it, then just maybe even read over it if you've written it down. I mean, I guess you should write it down and just read over it and think, okay, look, I know I can do it. I've done it in the past. Didn't go my way today. Tomorrow's a new day. And the thing with the stock market or the FX market or whatever, there's always another day, right? Like if you missed a trade or you did a bad trade, like there's no real reason to have FOMO, if that makes sense, because there's always another opportunity, whether it's the next day or next week or something. Um, it all comes down to psychology. You just have to be accepting of the loss and that they're part of the game and just, um, just be strong, I guess, and move on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that is challenging for most traders. And when you get into those holes, I mean, the the way at which you came back on the account is, is a true testament to obviously the resilience and your experience level. I mean, at the end of the day, most traders that are going down 5% a day, you know, are, are it's really challenging to recover, oh, yeah. especially in the, you know, the, the, way in which you that you did so so you know it's super interesting to to hear from your perspective but at the same time it's very in line with what most successful traders will say you know it's take the rest of the day off you know stick to the plan at the end of the day it's it's about what happens over the course of time don't yeah. let that one day or that one trade ruin the whole month exactly exactly that's actually the thing that i find the toughest is being patient almost and realizing it's a month and not to say for your mind, you say, you know, when you're doing the challenge, you've got to do 10%. Is that, yeah, I can do it potentially in five days, 10 days, but you don't need to, right? Yeah. No. You've got the whole month. I say this, and most people are like, what's the fastest that I can, you know, pass this account? It's like, let's just focus on getting the account. You know, we don't yeah, need exactly. to, you don't need to, right now, you don't have an account. You know, in yeah. a month from now, looking back on this current day, you would be very happy with an account. Like exactly. Account. So, yeah. you know, why put more pressure on yourself to pass in two days or one day? Yeah, yeah it makes no sense. Like it, when I started, when I started, it was 10,000 obviously, and we had what, 30 days, right? Or something to do it, mm -hmm. whatever it was. And so I just broke it down, whatever it was. It worked out to be every, every day. And I happened to have passed it in 10 days. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't my plan. Just things went my way, right? Some of the swing trades and stuff. And so, but had it taken another week or two, you know, so be it. Yeah. Um, it's just some less people, pressure. It's less pressure on yourself. It's a more professional yeah. way to go exactly. about things. You know, don't let the timeline affect your decision making. 
you, you'll take less risk naturally as well. If you think, oh, I have to do it in five days, you're going to take silly risk and you're just going to, you know, fail, basically. Now, this leads into my next question. How will you manage the funded account to keep it, you know, healthy? Will you create a margin on, or, you know, a buffer on the account? Or what is what exactly your plan on, like, withdrawals and everything like that? Um, I guess... I have my, my strategy is not too complicated. I like to keep things very simple in terms of my trading. Um, uh, in terms of the trading side, I'm not going to risk much. Okay, that one day was a bit of a blip, uh, admittedly, the other day. But on average, 1% of trade and all that. But I don't think I'll keep a buffer on the account, not initially. I think for the first few months, I will take the full withdrawal mm -hmm. and just take it from there, really. Um, um, because I don't intend on going crazy with the account, trying to do, you know, silly, unrealistic figures. I just mm -hmm. want to keep a steady sort of flow going. And then maybe in a, once I had one or two withdrawals and I'm comfortable with the process and you guys have got your new brokerage and all that stuff set up and the platform set up and everything's, you know, swimming along nicely, then I'll add another account, maybe try and go to the, to the maximum allowed. Mm -hmm. I'll just take it from there. I don't want to rush things. Like I see, I see on a Discord group, for example, some people are buying, you know, three two hundred thousand dollar accounts. It's good for them, you know. They might pass it first time and all the rest of it. It's, you know, it's good if they can do it. I just feel like it's better just to be a bit slow, a bit more methodical, and um, yeah, you're doing your due diligence, you know, to see how exactly see how how we work out with everything involved, and then go from there. Yeah, I mean, you know it as well. There are lots of horror stories. Not saying that you guys are, you've been great, to be honest, so far. Uh, but there are horror stories in this industry, right? Whether it's prop firms or signals or this, it's so many, you know, yeah. sometimes genuine, sometimes not. So you just got to be a bit sensible. And also within yourself, like you don't want to get carried away and think, oh, I've got a $600,000 account I'm going to trade as soon as I pass this thing and start spending money you don't even have yet. And um it's just better just to take things slow. It's, it's a marathon, right? It's an old cliche. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. It's got to treat it that way. I certainly agree. I think, you know, obviously that perspective or that approach is definitely, you know, the right approach for, for a long-term partnership at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. From our perspective, you know, we're obviously evaluating the trading, the results and everything. And then from your perspective, you're, doing your due diligence to see, okay, is this, is this firm going to re be responsive? Is this firm going to pay out? You know, is this firm yeah. going to stick to the rules that they put in place? And, and is their technology going to be sufficient to, tr to trade this and to trust what's going on? Yeah. I mean, look, you guys have been around for a couple of months, right? I've been using you guys for a month. So that's, it's, you know, it's still an early relationship. So like oh. I said, everything's been well so far. Um, but obviously there's still going to be the odd teething issue here and there. That's natural. Um, no alarm bells or anything, but you know, these things happen with anyone. So like you said, you just got to do due diligence. You just got to be comfortable. I mean, if someone's comfortable, you know, putting in three, $200,000 accounts, good for them. If mm -hmm. they can you know, make something of it. Yep. I'll do that eventually, but just not right now. Yep. So let's go on to the next one. What do you plan to do with the withdrawals? Uh, pay bills. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just live, I suppose. I don't know. No, nothing, nothing exciting, I guess. Um, got a wife and kid to look after, so they'll go towards that, I guess. Pay the bills, and um, yeah, more money I make, the more money I can spend on something more interesting, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we know how that goes. The, expen yeah. the expenses certainly scale. So of course. <laughs> let's go. Uh, so, what was your kind of in what is your first impression of the funded trader? Um, it's a good one, to be honest. Um, you know, it's very professional. Um, you know, every time I've used it or with FTMO or whatever, there's always um, you need to call support, right? You need to message them or something. The support with you guys has actually been very, very good, very responsive compared to everyone, basically. I mean, I can't, I can't fault your support, for example. Um, it's been good, yeah, professional. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. We've been accommodating as well. Um, you know, when I went to use a, a different broker, you had two brokers. And, you know, things like that go a long way, right? When you're on the Discord and you're listening to people's 
suggestions or, you know, they need a few things clarified or whatever it might be. And I get the impression that sometimes people in that position might be like a bit like, oh, it's our way or the highway, but you guys are pretty responsive to the, and pretty receptive to the good suggestions. Obviously that makes a big difference. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how things progress, to be honest, it's uh, so far so good. Yep. So one of the main, you know, pillars of our business, because I have worked with prop firms in the past as a trader, but also, you know, as sort of an op in the operations of the business. And, you know, these, these prop firms are springing up left and right. And yeah. for the most part, you know, the customer service aspect of them is really not sufficient. You know, it's exactly. something that lacks uh, significantly. So obviously one of the pillars of our business going into this, which is like customer excellence, like to have, as good of customer support as we possibly can be. Obviously we're a new business right now. We do have a customer success team, you know, that is doing their best uh, answering all the questions and getting coached up on all of the correct responses. And as this thing grows, you know, obviously we're going to continue to invest um, in the customer success team. So that way that people get that sort of personalized, um, you know, help that they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes a big difference, right? You just need someone just to, say, look, I understand what you're saying. I'll get back to you, whatever it is, and actually deal with it, right? And you'll, you talk to sort of a handful of people, not just every single time it's someone else, someone random, and you know they're just sitting in some call center somewhere on the other side of the world, probably not even, you know, just giving you generic responses. These, um, the guys I've spoken to, whether it's yourself or whoever, you know, they've, they've been good, so... Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, you're involved with the Forex League community as well. It's about building, you know, an environment that people can freely express themselves that they could trust, um, you know, with the discord, obviously there, if there's people in there that have like a predisposition and just are literally complaining about everything, it's like, okay, one of yeah. our rules is, you know, be respectful at the end of the day, yeah. professional. Um, but for the most part, you know, we want to build that community. We want, to have a place where if you do have a question, you need a response, you know, you will get a, a response as soon as possible. And yeah. that is something that's ultimately going to lead to, you know, the success of the business is creating an environment yeah. where you will meet other traders. You can discuss ideas with us. We're literally the owners of the, the business and you're discussing yeah. with us, you know, personally. So that we certainly feel as though that's um, an advantage for ourselves. Yeah, of course. I mean, look, if you're, if you ask a question and you get some generic answer or you don't get any response at all in some cases, you know, you're using customer service, it's nothing worse. So it's good. Yeah. It's important. So what would you, getting back into kind of the trading aspect of things, are you a swing trader, intraday or scalper, or like a combination of all of the above? Yeah, a combination of all. Um, I think I do a little bit intraday when it comes to uh, DAX and uh, Dow Jones, but sometimes they go so quickly you could, I guess, call them a scalp as well. Um, and then when it comes to the FX side of things, it's definitely more swing. So it's a combination. It depends on the opportunity as well. I mean, you can have a plan, but sometimes the opportunity arises where you can allow yourself a slightly different strategy, I suppose. Um, would, you say, yeah, combination. would you say the last uh, year or two with everything going on with the pandemic has affected the swing trading environment at all? Yeah, I mean, I was... Um, when I started out for myself, I was more of an intraday scalp trader. I didn't swing too much um, in my trades. And then when, um, when the pandemic hit and obviously the market went crazy, um, I literally just stuck to the indices and tried to trade those. Trade those. And it went out really well because you just had to put a short on every morning. And for three weeks, it was great. And then it turned. So it has changed things. Mm -hmm. It has changed things, I think, to an extent, but the fundamentals remain the same, right? I mean, things are settled down pretty much now. There's always going to be headwinds that are going to affect things. But, you know, if you're experienced and you know what you're doing and you've got a good plan, whether you're a swing trader, intraday, uh, scalper, it doesn't matter what works for you and what you can consistently, you know, be successful at. That's what's important, I think. That leads into my next question. Do you use fundamentals, you know, and where are you kind of getting your information from? Um, I obviously look at the fundamentals to, to know what's going on. Uh, but I don't think I trade on them. I don't, 
I don't want to trade on too many high volatile sort of news events or whatever in the week. Um, I want to minimize my risk even in that regard because, like I said, there's so many headwinds, right? And whenever one goes, another one crops up. Um, after a couple of years ago, it was Trump in China, and then it became the pandemic, and now it's inflation. You know, there's always going to be something, and then there's always going to be some guy, you know, saying some nonsense, and it's going to affect it. So I look at the fundamentals. You have to, right? Um, but I don't necessarily trade off them too much. Do you, do you utilize an EA at all? No, I haven't. Um, I looked into it and it's something I just need a bit more information on before I do it. I mean, I don't know who the best ones, whatever. I think you guys use one, right? If you do, I might hit you up and ask you for a bit more information about what you recommend. Yeah, and and also in the Discord community, you know, for the funded trader, there's definitely a lot of people with experience yeah, yeah. building these things and everything. Yeah, I, I, I did see that um, the other day. I just need to, once I get, like, once I do a couple months with this account, I will, and I feel comfortable, I will get a couple more. And then I'll probably try and link them up or, or do whatever. It's the easiest solution, I think. So give us a quick kind of insight into what is exactly your strategy. Okay, so with the indices, okay, first of all, I try to keep it as simple as possible because I think too many people make things too, too complicated. And just to try to make themselves feel more intelligent and make it out like what they do is really clever. But at the end of the day, you, I just keep it simple. I try to anyway. So the indices are the main thing that I trade every day. And they are DAX uh, in the London session and the Dow Jones in the US, in the New York session. So what I do is um, a couple hours after the market opens, I look at the one hour chart and I look out for a breakout whether it's on the up or the down, and just try and literally on the DAX, try and get 20 points and on the Dow, 50 points. And one-to-one -one ratio, risk reward. Um, and it, you know, the success rate is pretty good. I mean, on my DAX for the last month or something, I think I hit out of 21 trading days, there were two two stop losses two losses and maybe another two where i got out of break even or three got out of break even or something and the rest of you know it's just profit so it's not big i don't, I don't use huge huge lots um contract sizes because then you're risking too much just try to keep it simple with the indices because they move so you don't need too many you don't need sort of 300 points in a day or something it's unrealistic um, 20 points, 50 points, something like that. Uh, with gold, gold's a bit more tricky. When I do trade gold, either try to scalp it if it's moving quickly, um, that's as and when, or if I look at the charts and I see an opportunity for a slightly longer trade a few days, um, then I'll try and take that. And with the uh, FX stuff, similar, similar, that's when the FX stuff, I have to sit down a bit more, analyze the charts, because swing trading, price action is key, basically. And um, just look for resistance and support levels and you know, the basic fundamentals of trading, I suppose, without going into a whole like lecture series about that. But yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. I don't use silly indicators and all that because they're all lagging. No one will tell you what's going to happen or what's even happening right now. Uh, price action for me is more important and also Maybe just something over with experience, but you got to trust your instincts. That's your instincts to trade and instincts not to trade. Um, I think the biggest, one of the biggest lessons I learned, especially when you're trying to scalp, for example, or day trade, is sometimes, sometimes it's best not to trade if you're sort of any sort of doubt. And you got to trust your gut, but sometimes you look at it and think, yeah, 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 it's just going up, scale. But if you're not 100% sure, don't go in the trade. Um, you don't regret the trades that you, that you miss out on. You regret the trades that you make, right? Because there's always another opportunity. And you've got to protect your capital. 
And you're not going to protect your capital by taking trades for the sake of taking trades. So, yeah, that's my yeah. strategy. That makes sense. <laughs> to me, it's amazing because all of these, you know, every time we're asked or, you know, about our strategy or we're asking someone else about our strategy, it really all just comes back to psychology. Yeah, key. Yeah. It really comes back to psychology. I mean, price action is extremely straightforward unless you're using, you know, certain indicators and whatnot that obviously need a little more explanation. But if you're using market structure zones and price action, I mean, it's pretty straightforward what we're looking for. Everyone has a little bit different perspective about things. Cool. I, like yeah. to, I like to call it like, like putting together a puzzle. You can put the pieces in front of someone and they will, you know, each person will put it together in a much different way. No one will put it together the same exact way. It's the same thing we're looking at a chart. It's an expression of, you know, your perspective on every situation. So it's obviously extremely unique. Um, so we're super excited to obviously continue to see you do well with the firm, obviously to grow with us. Uh, we have hopes, obviously high hopes for you that you will be able to get to the point where you have all of those, the three 200K accounts. But like you said, you know, as we grow, um, you will grow as well. And I think that's, you know, a very professional decision for you to make. The last question I wanted to ask is just long term, what do you believe the funded trader will do for this industry and beyond? Well, um, I guess the first goal really is just to establish yourselves right properly and be a respected player in the game. Because like you mentioned before, there are lots of these companies coming up mm -hmm. and I don't think it would take too much effort if you just do the things, the basic things the right way. And that's what you guys are doing. If you look at the Discord chat, you're open and receptive to what people want. And that's key because, right, if the people don't like your rules, they're not going to pay the money to, to be involved. And once you establish yourselves and sort of step away from the sort of rubbish, if you like, There'll be three or four players in the in the industry. There are already a couple that stand out, I suppose, have been a bit more established. And I guess the key is just to take market share from those guys or wherever you want to put it, you know, to stand side by side with those guys and push on, you know, even above them. Um, as long as you do things the way you are, you do it methodically and uh, patiently, um, nothing good ever happens overnight, I don't believe, no. next time. No. You do things the correct way, the right way. A million decisions, you know, put together. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and that counts for you guys too with your with your business. Um, um, but yeah, I got high hopes. Um, I'm excited to see where you guys go from here. Um, so far, so good. Um, no complaints on my end. Um, um, so yeah, I think yeah, if you carry on this trajectory, there's no reason why you can't achieve whatever goals you you guys have set up for yourselves. Yeah, like you said, I mean, you know, if we hit the bare minimum, you know, we're right in the in the mix. Um, but for us, it's it's to go kind of above and beyond that. You know, yeah. obviously, obviously improve upon what uh, the experiences that people have had. And it really comes down to what our experiences are as, you know, leaders of the business, leaders of the company. We've all traded with prop firms, Blake and myself, the members, yeah. of the, you know, other partners as well. We're all traders. So we already know, you know, in and out the experiences we've had, how we can improve upon those things. And uh, that will certainly, uh, you know, give us an advantage. So obviously I thank you for coming on. I thank you for supporting you. our newly, you know, established firm. I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with the business moving forward. And for everyone watching, I will again link down below his contact information. So if you do want to reach out, you know, in any professional way, um, you can do so. Yeah. Pleasure. Thanks for your time. Uh, it was great chatting to you.